This tutorial is over 12.2. 12.2 deals with arcs and angles, mainly central angles. When we're dealing with arcs, we're dealing with minor and major arcs. The biggest thing that you needed to pick out of 12.2 was that if you had a central angle, the central angle will always be equal to the arc that's inscribed to it. So for example, if I were to draw a circle and I were to have a central angle. Now remember a central angle has to go through the center of a circle and it has to intersect the circle to create an arc. So the intercepted arc that I would have created would be right here. So pretend that's really not the center of the circle. But let's say that that is the center of the circle, so we'll call that C. If we wanted to find arc AB, we would have to know the measurement of angle ACB. In order to find the measure angle ACB, let's say that that angle was 47 degrees. If angle ACB was 47 degrees in here, then arc AB hey, would also angle. measure a or 47 degrees. Now, if we wanted to figure out what arc, let's call it a um, ADB. So, if we wanted to find this, this enough. large arc out here, we already know that this arc AB is 47 degrees. We know a circle equals 360 degrees, so we're going to take 360 minus 47. When you take 360 minus 47, you so arc ADB, so the blue arc, would be 313 degrees. So the biggest thing that you need to remember is if you know your central angle, then you also know the arc that's being intersected or the arc that's being created. Now sometimes they are going to give you a circle. So let's draw another circle. And they are going to give you, let's pretend again that these are going through the center of your circle. So we'll call that C. So since this is the center, let's pretend let's say that this arc or this angle and that angle are the same. Now if I were to give you this angle was 100 degrees, so this angle right here is 100 degrees, would you be able to figure out what that angle is? The question or the answer is yes. We know that this line, since it's going through the center of the circle, and it's also intersecting on both sides of that circle, that's called a diameter. And since it's a diameter, it's creating a semicircle. So this whole arc right here is going to be 180 degrees. And since that's 180, we already know from that rule, that if you know the central angle, then you know the arc, that's going to be 100 degrees. So then that has to be 80. Since you know this arc is 80 degrees, you also know that that central angle is 80 degrees. Now, since these two angles are congruent, then that also means that this central angle is 80 and this arc would be 80 degrees. So that's the main thing. The other thing that you had to pick out was if you have central angles that are congruent, then you know that the central ar or the arcs are congruent that they enter or that they're being intercepted. Now, if you know the central angle and the ar the arcs are congruent, then you also know that these chords that they are creating are congruent as well. So, if that chord was five, then this chord down here would also be five. The next thing you had to know is the difference between a minor arc and a major arc. A minor arc has to be less than 180 degrees, so it's less than a semicircle. When you label a minor arc, you are only going to have two letters in it. So in this example, a minor arc would be um, TS, for example, or you could say um, SL, for example. The next 
type is a major arc. A major arc has to be greater than 180 degrees but less than 360. An example of a major arc would be STL. So that arc right there. Now when we label a major arc, since it's greater than 180 degrees and less than 360, you have to have three letters in it. So I would label this um, arc STL or LTS. The last thing in this section is the arc addition postulate. The arc addition postulate is pretty easy. It's the same thing as if you were having an angle addition postulate or a segment addition postulate. If you wanted to find um, JK, so if you wanted to find this whole arc, you had to use properties of arcs and properties of central angles in order to find that. Now we already know that this arc HL is 101 degrees and we know IL is a diameter since it's going through the center of a circle so that's creating 180 degrees. That means that arc IH is going to be 79 degrees. Also notice that HK is a diameter. You already know 79 degrees and 60 degrees. Those two add up to 139 degrees so that leaves That means that you have, since HK is a diameter, then we know that um, arc HK is going to create 180 degrees. So if we have 139 degrees, then we are going to have 41 degrees left. So arc JH or JK is 49 degrees. Actually, I don't believe that's correct. Let's check. Minus what? 60. Mom? Excuse me, it's 41 degrees. Okay. Um, we also want to find angle HGI. Now, angle HGI is right here. Since we already know arc HI, that's 79 degrees, then the central angle HGI is also going to be congruent to that. So HGI is going to be 79. Now we need to find um, arc ILH. Arc ILH. Look at the lights. Look at the lights. Is going to be this arc right here. Now, when you want to figure out the arc that you need, you need to go in order, just like your angles. Like when we talked about at the beginning of the year, since it went ILH, you have to go in order. So I. LH would be um, that way. Now we already know that angle or arc IH is 79 degrees. We know that a circle adds up to 360 degrees. So in order to find arc ILH, since it's a major arc, it has three letters, we know that it has to be greater than 180. So you're going to take 360 and subtract whatever is not included in that angle, which would be 281. So this is going to be 281. Now angle KGL. Hold on, okay. In order to find KGL, we know that HK again is a, um, a diameter. And since we have 101 degrees of the 180, then whatever is left would be 79. So KL arc KL would be 79 so then the central angle KGL would also be 79. That is all that you really need to know for section 12.2.